Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the, welcome to the Journalism's Roundtable. My name is Richard Prince, and I write a column called Journalism's, journal-isms.com, which is about diversity issues in the news business. And we've been having this roundtable since 1999, when a bunch of friends got together to wish another one of our colleagues well, as she went on to get a doctorate. And she said, uh, keep this going while I'm gone. And we did. And we met uh, in a, a restaurant in Washington, DC uh, every month and, until the pandemic took place when we switched to Zoom. And when we did that, we increased our numbers exponentially and were able to get people from all around the country and actually all around the world uh, to participate in this. So that's been uh, a great silver lining for us. Uh, so uh, we are here to, um, the purpose remains the same, to network and to learn. And in this platform, the networking takes place uh, mostly in the chat room. So you can, you can um, chat with people individually or leave a message for the whole group and uh, have a discussion that way. So as I say, welcome everyone. I want to start off, uh, let's see, I'm looking to see who's here. Uh, okay. We want to start off with a, a recognition of uh, our journalism educator who has done the most for diversity, uh, as determined by the uh, by the judges of the Barry Bingham Fellowship Award, which started off by um, uh, by by uh, being awarded by the uh, National Conference of Editorial Writers, which became the Association uh, of Opinion Journalists which is now merged into the News Leaders Association, <laughs> which is the editors, the, formerly the Associated, the American Society of Newspaper Editors. In any case, uh, we decided to give the award this year to uh, Dr. Uh, Marquita Smith, and uh, who is uh, at, uh, at uh, Ole Miss, I guess they still call it Ole Miss, University of Mississippi. And many people will know her from her days with uh, uh, the, the, the Virginian pilot and other McClatchy and Gannett uh, properties. And two of the people who nominated her are right here on the Zoom. So I'm glad to see Dorothy Bland and uh, Denise Bridges, Montreal Wave. Uh, and uh, so now we want to raise a toast to Marquita Smith, uh, wish her well, and congratulate her on being the winner of the 2022 Barry Bingham Senior Award. Congratulations, Marquita. Here, here. Okay. Now, do you want to say anything uh, to the group about, uh, about anything you wish, actually? I just want to say thanks. It's it was quite an honor. Uh, some of the things that we do come natural when you, when you think about the next generation of people to create stories and to speak truths um, and to really highlight the good works that are happening in our communities. Um, it's important. Uh, it was important to me as a newsroom leader to make sure that we were in places that we needed to be. Um, and as an academic, it's important that I continue to create space for students to figure out ways that they can speak into these um, very complicated issues uh, today. And whether that's across digital or print or, or multi-platform, I think it's still important for us to create a spirit of service uh, to the industry. And so one of the things that I try to tell my graduate students now is that even if you don't see yourself um, in it long term, if you can create a Peace Corps opportunity, uh, that might be one way to get them to serve uh, in, a, in a local news desert or any place where they can get some experience and usually they get hooked and find themselves uh carrying that torch uh, for the life so it's quite an honor to be on here with you all today and i'm just excited uh about the future still even though there seems to be some turbulent times in terms of um the industry with some of the news that's come out in the last couple of weeks i you know i still try to encourage students to to give it a shot what what, what kind of news are you talking about uh Gannett. Oh, layoffs. Yes, absolutely layoffs. Okay. 
Well, now, one of the things that impressed the judges was that you were doing a lot of things um, in your work there at the, at the school and, and, and previously that others weren't doing. Uh, what are some of those things? And if you want to chime in, Dorothy or, or Denise, please go ahead. Dorothy, would you like to chime in? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, well, I am so proud of um, Marquis University of Mississippi. As you all know, she had a, a long um, career um, in industry, but also when she was at John Brown University, she was a diversity officer and she actually took students um, to other places in the South so they could experience some of the work that's being done um, and the need uh, for the civil rights movement. Because in many cases, uh, students, um, they hear uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and they say, oh, um, yeah, that's a historical figure, but far beyond that, uh, she has worked very diligently uh, to make a positive difference um, in uh, parts of the South, um, so that's part of her legacy. Um, I would also share that um, she and I are working on an HBCU radio preservation project um, that is um, seminal when I think about it, um, in part because of uh, WHUR just celebrated their 50th anniversary, KTSU and Southern uh, celebrated their 50th anniversary, um, and there are archives that are tremendous um, potential um, uh, jewels um, that need to be mined from a historical perspective. Um, so we're, um, and, and I want to thank Jocelyn Robinson as well for uh, leading us um, down uh, that road um, as well. Uh, but, um, and Dr. Uh, Smith, um, the graduate program at the uh, University of Mississippi, uh, she's in the process of building it. Um, and I think that that, and we all know that Mississippi has a tremendous history, um, whether um, you, you think back to, um, um, how can I say this? It's the Delta uh, in many cases. And um, also prayers go out to the folks in Jackson uh, who are um, dealing with major flooding currently. So that's just a little bit. Again, Marquita, we're so proud of you and the work that you're doing. Thank you. Here, 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 here. Okay. Um, uh, do you want to add anything? Go ahead. Uh, I just want to add that like here, uh, one of the reasons uh, I took this job is to try to create a pipeline for minority service institutions. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's one of the charges. And this year I have two fully funded students from HBCUs uh, for the first time, like in the history of our journalism program. Uh, we have a small journalism cohort, more students that are studying integrated, integrated marketing communications, but I do have two uh, one indigenous African-American female student from Russ College and the other African-American female from um, Mississippi Valley. And so it's those kind of pipelines that you, you don't see, but when you're able to go recruit them personally yourself and to shepherd them in the process and help them to be competitive to get full funding uh, so they can see themselves um, as matriculating and succeeding here at the University of Mississippi. Uh, which this is the 60th anniversary uh, anniversary of the James Meredith integration year. Uh, and for me, it, it was important to make sure we have students coming through the pipeline uh, to continue his legacy as well. All right, well, congratulations once again, Marquita. Uh, we look forward to having you in the discussion later on as well. Uh, now we also have a new president of one of our major journalism associations, uh, and that is Yvette Cabrera, who has assumed the leadership of the National Association of Hispanic Journalists. And I already got a, a, an email from Yvette expressing outrage at the treatment of journalists in Puerto Rico. So she's on the case. Uh, so let's congratulate Yvette and hear what Yvette has planned. Oh, and Yvette, of course, she's been with us before when we were in the restaurants. Uh, and she now works for the Center for Public Integrity uh, and uh, her specialty is environmental justice. So Yvette, take it away. What do you, what do you have planned for NAHJ? Thank you, Richard. Thank you all for, for having me here. Um, well, we, we do have a lot on our plate. Um, the organization just approved a five-year strategic plan and um, a lot of detail in there, but one of the, the things that I'm most excited about is a, a focus on advocacy work. And this is something that we heard as we um, did outreach to our members to ask them what they were looking um, 
from us. And, and what they said was we want more advocacy. And so uh, what we've done, um, we have a team in place called the rapid response team. And so when issues come up, like you mentioned, the um, photojournalists and journalists in Puerto Rico being um, attacked by um, uh, police officers, um, we, we put out statements. Um, but these rapid response statements um, we'll address an issue, we will do, um, we will reach out to have dialogues with the different agencies involved or news organizations involved, but we want to take it a step further than that and, um, and try to really drill down on the issues that we're seeing, um, including pay equity. Um, of, of course, uh, the treatment of the press, first and foremost, is, is our concern because as we've all seen through the coverage of protests um, and marches, um, journalists have been um, have been in the line of fire um, in the process of trying to do their jobs, and so we definitely, you know, defending that freedom of the press is is paramount for us. Um, and so, uh, so that is going to be one of the things that we focus on by uh, working with our our chapters, working with our regional uh, representatives to uh, come up with a plan on top priorities in that advocacy area. Um, and then we have other um, areas that we're going to focus on, which is developing and nurturing um, leaders amongst our members. Um, we hope to launch a Latina Leadership Institute um, because one of the other things that we hear of, as we all know, we've been I, I've been <laughs> advocating for diversity in newsrooms for decades now, and um, mm -hmm. you know, remember the day you know when we were talking about parity in newsrooms, and um, and as we know the the, the downturn and the layoffs in the industry have really affected the number of journalists of color in, in newsroom and in newsrooms. And so that's one of the areas where um, where we want to focus our efforts. Um, and and so, yeah, so uh, a lot on our a lot on our plate. Um, but but uh, we're we're you know, we have a great board. We just had our elections. Um, and we're going to work uh, together with our members to try to to tackle those areas. Okay, thank you, Yvette. Anybody got any questions for Yvette before we move on to the next? Uh... Okay, I don't see any, so you must have covered everything, Yvette. Uh, I want to also point out that we have here the people from uh, from Madison, Wisconsin, Francis Huntley Cooper and uh, Neil Heinen, and they were with us before because they want to start in Madison a Center for Black Excellence uh, because uh, it's needed, they say. So uh, can you just give us a little update on that, Francis and Neil, and or Neil? Okay, I don't know where Neil disappeared to. Well, okay. he'll be back. Oh, I see you, Neil. I see okay. you, Neil. Good morning, Neil. Okay, and everyone. I'm Francis, and Neil, Neil and I are co-chair with um, Reverend Alex G of the Center for Black Excellence and Culture. And we're right down, we're now coming down to trying to raise the last few dollars to get the program so we can get the shovels in the ground. So we've raised about 22 million of 38. Mm. And so we're um, we're close, yeah, we're close, but it's, you know, oh, sort of a standstill now. Um, so, and it's been, we raised that in nine months, you know, small money here and there, you all know how fundraising goes. So um, that's where we are and- Well, tell um, us Francis, not everybody was here the first time you all were here. So tell us why this is needed in Madison. Okay, Neil, you want to take that away since you did such a great editorial? <laughs> <laughs> um, as, as all of you know, Wisconsin, and in particular, Madison and Milwaukee are uh, have the unfortunate reputation as the worst places in America for Black people to live. Uh, that's uh, uh, now probably a, de a decade old, and, um, and, and data certainly supports that in terms of education and income and, uh, and criminal justice. And so this is an effort to change that narrative, to, to, to create a place. And what's really important here is that this is a black led, black inspired uh, um, and, and, and black supported um, uh, place, a physical place. Reverend G talked to hundreds and hundreds um, of people in the community and they identified a place to be as, uh, as one of the most important needs in our community. And so this is gonna bring in people from the university, people from businesses, hopefully media will, will be able to have a, a, another um, argument um, 
to, uh, to journalists of color why this is a place uh, that they might want to be and stay and, and, and raise a family. Uh, so we hope this will be a national model, uh, but also to, uh, to respond to the critical need here uh, of the disparities that we see in Madison and Wisconsin. And I'll okay. add, I'd like right. to add also that um, you know, for me being an African American, been here since 1973, it is hard to recruit and reclaim and to retain people of color, particular African Americans, to move here and stay here. You know, to raise a family. So um, this is a great opportunity with the business community, as Neil said. I was a UW graduate. Um, that helps people like not just come through here, but maybe consider staying. Um, and then just the culture opportunities that um, we don't have to run to Milwaukee, we don't have to run to Chicago or New York or, or DC, you know, but um, we're, so we're trying to have those opportunities for um, people of color here in, in our community. And Excellent. thank you, Richard. Thanks oh. for allowing us to speak. Well, thanks for coming and thanks for the explanation. Yes. Uh, we want to, uh, I was I keep checking to see if anyone else I need to, I was waiting for uh, is here. I don't think so. I think they'll be joining us probably later. So let's move right into our main program. And that is uh, uh, Bruce Talamon is going to uh, uh, present some of his work for us. He's, uh, he's been a, a photographer for uh, a long time and he's, he's, he's got some of our friends. Uh, he, he worked with some of our friends in covering the Jesse Jackson campaign back in 1984. And uh, <laughs> I see his Roy Lewis is saying yes. Uh, and, um, and among other things, uh, uh, he's got this, uh, this new exhibit uh, called Hotter Than July uh, that opened at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on July 27th. And it features some of the people that lots of us know as our as musical icons. And I looked at a couple of his pictures, uh, a few of, I looked at the collection of pictures actually. Uh, before we came on and I left uh, having to watch the videos of Rose, Wind and Fire singing Boogie Wonderland. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you might have some of the same reactions after you see what Bruce has, has in store. So welcome Bruce and take it away. He's out in LA by the way. And you need to unmute. We can't hear you yet. Gotcha. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, now, you've got it uh, teed up the, uh, um, the, the, the PowerPoint? Uh-oh. Uh, no, you have to talk to, uh, let's see, Benita does. Uh, Benita, are you there? I, I do not have his PowerPoint okay. presentation. All right, well, hold on a second. Uh, I will. Who have, I do you have, have it, Bruce? Do you have your own PowerPoint presentation? Well, yes, I do. I have it. But Wait, yeah, go ahead. Go I mean, you can you can share it yourself if you like. I sent it to. I, I am not that technologically uh, uh, proficient. <laughs> uh, it would be a disaster. You okay. all. Okay. Well, I will email. Um, oh. Well, Archie, you can just go ahead and bring it up. That's fine. Oh, I can bring it up. Sure. I had to do that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. But let's let's see here. Hold on. I will I will Hello. find it. If you if you brought it up before to look at it, then you can bring it up again. Okay, I'm bringing it up right now. This is going to be an adventure. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, hold on, everyone. This, the new one that I sent you. Sorry. The the new one that I sent. Yeah, you. right. I have that. Is that a working? Is that a working jukebox? I'm looking at her? it, but. Uh, yeah. This is a matter of fact. Okay, so Richard, you brought it up on your screen. You have it yes, up. It says it's downloading. I, I think I downloaded it already, but it's downloading again. Oh. Yeah, so, make, so go ahead and once it's finished downloading, open yes. it up first okay. so you can see it on your screen. Okay, hold on a second. Open file. Oh, brother. How do I want to open this file? It's a PowerPoint presentation, you said, Bruce. Yes. Yes. So you have to open it up. So you have to open it up in PowerPoint. Okay, just a second. Let's see. I apologize for this. That's all right. We uh, 
We are one well with questions. Okay. Let's see. Learning on the fly. And then all you have to do is push. Oh, Fred's here. Yeah, buddy. Okay. Well, I'm opening it up, but once, let me see. Uh-oh. Uh, it says, how do I want to open the file? Look for an app. Okay, I'm going to look for an Hold app in, in the file. Wait a minute. Hold on. Um, Betty, is, is that? No, Benita. Benita? Yes. Ah, I was just going to say, so can I, see, I didn't think that I could do it from my computer. Sure, you can. Just bring it up on your computer. Oh, okay, because then maybe I can do that, uh, Richard, and then that way. Okay, we... well, I'm, I'm working on it also. Okay, <laughs> okay. You, uh, you have the Zoom app on your computer, um, Bruce? The Zoom app? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, you you see you can see us on the screen, right? I can. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the Zoom. I don't. What are you using? A laptop or a Mac? A Mac. Oh God. Okay. You Mac people got to help him out. <laughs> I can. Uh, help you, can I, I, I can help you with this, Bruce. Bruce or you can too. Go ahead. Go ahead, Michelle. You go, Michelle. Bruce. Bruce. Fred, um, you. Bruce. Just, on your just screen, share your you screen. screen? Share the Use screen. the green button that says share screen. Share screen at the bottom. Bruce, Fred here. Oh, okay, um, hold, hold on, hold on. Okay. I see participants. Share screen, yes. Okay. Share your screen, brother, when you pull it up. Otherwise, we'll go let, full Luddite and just hold up your book and thumb through it. Um, <laughs> <other way. laughs> yeah, okay, hold on one sec. Okay. Share All right, I see that that's in the thing. Let me pull up the... Uh, uh, the deal. And Benita is right. going to give you permission to share your screen with all. Hold on, yeah. Fred. Hold, yeah. I, hold on. <laughs> I'm with you, but I got to I got to move some stuff around. Got a little tiny screen and all right, here we go. So, luckily I've at least got it uh uh, uh cataloged, right? So <laughs> You just need there. to click on the one that shows Journalisms. All right, here we go. So I'm opening it up. Bam. There it is. Okay, now what do I have to do with it? Um, do I have to put it in the thing where it says Zoom, zoom uh, or rather, you see, that's the, that's my question. How no, I, just click on share screen. I, I thought I just did. I did. When you, and when you do that, you'll get a list of screens. You should get a white thing and it shows yeah. a lot of screens on there. Three screens. Uh -huh. And you're going to click on the one that shows the one you want us to see. Ah. Because it's got a lot of little squares on there, and you're going to look at the one that's your PowerPoint presentation. That's the one you want to click on. And, and then you're going to hit the little red blue square that says share at the bottom. I see that. And guess what? I see other, I see two other things that we, oh, I see. Maybe all I have to do is just get rid of this other thing. Uh -huh. uh, learn as you earn. Yeah, Bruce. Uh, okay, here we go. So let's get rid of this. No, let's not get rid of Zoom. Uh, <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Get rid of this. So far, so good. Get rid of this. And okay, and let's go back to uh, let me let me start it again. Let me try it again. Uh, uh oh, or can you all still hear me? Yes, yes. we hear you fine. Well, then that's at, we're halfway there. Um, let's see. Okay, well here now we go. Now click. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm, on share. I'm about no. I did that, but all right. Anybody? Can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Bruce, do you have your presentation up on your screen? Can you see your presentation? Yes, I do. I can see it. Okay. So when you do the share screen, then you need to click on that screen where you see your presentation. Okay, I will. Ah, there you go. There we go. All right, there you go. I just had to redo it. And so now... We can see it. Okay, we can see it now. Perfect. Yay. 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 Oh, July and August. Because, Bruce, I thought we were all going to have to take a road trip there. Well, you know, I'm sure we can work that out. So, <laughs> so, okay, we got, okay, so you can see that. 
Can you see the whole screen? Because I see people on the side. Yeah, we, yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Right. We can do it. This is good. Okay. So, who am I? So, I'm Bruce Toloman. Uh, I photograph. I grew up in South Central Los Angeles. Uh, my photographs catalog what I call the adventures that have taken me around the world a couple of times. Um, Hotter Than July was really only an idea on a scrap of paper until the Rock Hall made it happen. And I've got to tell you all, I've, you know, I'm forever grateful to the, uh, a young woman named uh, Waka Onwusa. Uh, she's the vice president and chief curator of the Rock Hall. And this young sister is fabulous. And she designed the show, put it together. And uh, as Richard mentioned, the exhibit opened uh, July 27th and it will continue until July of 2023. Um, I like to say this is work from a young African-American photographer at the start of his career, which was around 1972. Um, it was rediscovered actually in 2014 when I got a call from Maurice White of Earth, Wind and Fire. I had done extensive work with EWF. I'd done three world tours with them. And uh, Reese was working on his biography and wanted his co-author, a fellow named Herb Powell, to see the work. And after we made a deal for the Earth, Wind and Fire photographs, uh, Herb asked the fateful question, well, what else do you have? And when the dust settled, Tashin Books released uh, Bruce Toloman, Soul, R&B, and Funk Photographs, 1972 to 1982, which was published in 2018. Folks, the, the book is four years old, and it's in its second printing, and, and it's been wonderful. Um, but I got to, before I hit, hit the, the, the button to, to show you the stuff, I've got to also thank uh, two people, Howard L. Bingham, who some of you may know as Muhammad Ali's photographer and uh, photographer for Life magazine, and uh, a woman named Regina Jones. Uh, Howard Bingham dropped me off on her doorstep in 1972, and Regina Jones was the publisher and of, of a a publication called Soul Newspaper, Soul Publications, that had started after the Watts Rebellion. And uh, in, in 1966 is when it started. And I'll just say she gave Leonard Pitts and Bruce Toloman uh, some of their early jobs. And we went on to have a great time and great adventures. So, you know, I would like to think that I've captured what I call a visual, a visual history of R&B royalty. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm just going to start with a few images from my other life, because for the past 47 years, I've had a successful career as a working photographer in editorial and as a contract photographer for Time magazine. So we start and... This is me at the uh, at the Rock Hall. Uh, these are some of the photographs: Parliament Funkadelic, Sly Stone, uh, Elton John on Soul Train. But I always want to start with uh, a little statement from a friend and a uh, person who gave me the job at Time Magazine, Arnold Drapkin. Arnold Drapkin was the picture editor, and in 1984 he gave me a job I'll never forget. Uh, to cover Jesse Jackson for time. And uh, that turned into an, uh, an eight month, <laughs> an eight month show, an eight month job. And, but he said something a long time ago. He said, there's no excuse for not coming back with the shot. And I've basically uh, always uh, used that as, uh, as uh, a touchstone. Bruce, excuse me one second. Can you make your screen full screen, please? Can I make my screen full screen? Yeah, do you know how to do that? Well, uh, I think what I can do is if I get rid of, I should be able to get rid of. No, you should be able to click on something there to make it full screen. Okay, because you can only. Uh, if you go to the original PowerPoint and, and take it full, 
and then you go back to just taking it uh, oh, on the okay. share screen, it'll work. Yes, 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 I can do that. Uh, I think all you have to do is click on slideshow at the top in the menu. Okay. Where it says slideshow. I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you, hold on. Just hold down on. one line. Uh, slideshow. Yes. Okay, try, and it's- And try play from start over on the left. Play from start, all the way. The button all the way on the left. Yep. Play from start. Yep. How? And okay. There we go. There we go. All you go. have to do is click to change the slides. That's it. Okay, and all I have to do is click. Okay, so this is the entrance to the Rock Hall. When you go into the Rock Hall, um, <laughs> first you see some guitars and a whole bunch of people. Folks are coming out of the woodworks for, for the Rock Hall. It's been there 25 years. It's in Cleveland. And uh, then you go through the uh, Beatles room. And then after the Beatles room, you go through the Elvis room. And then you hit my room, which is really kind of cool. So that's Bootsy Collins. That's a, a, a 10 foot by uh, a 16 foot Bootsy Collins. And uh, it points its way right to the, uh, uh, to the show. So uh, this is inside the show. We've seen this. This is uh, my, my uh, quote from Arnold Drapkin. And this is the young photographer, uh, at the start of his career in Mexico City with Earth, Wind, and Fire, that was shot, by the way, with a fellow named by a fellow named Don Myrick, who was the uh, saxophone player uh, 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 in uh, the Phoenix Horns, uh, which uh, was the band, which was the uh, the sound section that uh, or horn section that that uh, traveled with the fire. Uh, but like I said, I like to say that I've had a few adventures, and this is a little something from my from my movie days. Uh, I scared the hell out of my mother when she came to lunch and she saw me uh, 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 standing on the, um, uh, the skids strapped in um, shooting this, which was a movie called uh, Blue Thunder for Columbia Pictures. And I did stuff uh, like mount cameras on, I, I've always loved problem solving. And uh, that started a long time ago. Um, but also I've fought, uh, Vampires with Wesley Snipes in Prague and uh, posters uh, for uh, Paramount Pictures from Wesley's uh, Drop Zone and uh, also other action heroes like, <laughs> like Paul Rubens. Um, and along with that, I have another statement. Do not drop the five pound camera on the $20 million actor. Um, that gets you fired. Um, and Will Smith uh, was, we were working on uh, some reshoots on a movie uh, called Wild Wild West. And I wanted to get something that uh, showed him going under the train and there was no room for the photographer. So I had to mount my rig on top of uh, the, uh, the Panavision camera. Something like this, where you can see those photographers uh, who, who might be in the audience here, you can see, um, the, uh, uh, the Nikon camera uh, mounted to Steven Spielberg's uh, uh, rig. And this was for the last uh, uh, Indiana Jones movie. Uh, and uh, that's Harrison Ford's stunt double uh, jumping into the, um, uh, the back of uh, 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 a moving truck. And once again, you know, th there's, there's no room for the still photographer I've found. So, you know, um, and, and when these guys turn to you and ask, did you get the shot? There's only one answer. Um, our action hero, uh, uh, Shia LaBeouf and uh, Harrison Ford being chased. Uh, and then I also do portraits or did portraits uh, with uh, Morgan Freeman and uh, posters for Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts. Uh, Tom directed this. Um, a little movie called Larry Crown. There are no little movies with Julia Roberts and Tom Hanks. Um, Eddie Murphy, Beverly Hills Cop 2, The Poster, and then action with uh, Jack Nicholson and uh, some other folks, uh, Glenn Close, Natalie Portman in a movie that uh, was directed by uh, Tim Burton called Mars Attacks. 
And um, I generally uh, have a nice time uh, doing stuff that blows up and then doing portraits. You've got three um, generations of comedy here. This was taken on the uh, set of uh, Harlem Nights. And, um, you know, when you say three generations, I mean, that is it. And that'll never come again. Uh, Red Fox was, was uh, wonderful, as was Eddie and Richard. Paramount had actually said to me, uh, we want you to do a portrait of Richard and Eddie. And they didn't care about Red. And uh, well, at three o'clock in the morning, the, the, the PR people weren't around. So uh, uh, we did it the right way. And uh, uh, actually I did the two portraits or you know the portraits of Richard and, and Ed. And the nice thing was before I could even say, you know, Red, you know, come on in, Ed turned and, and, and said it. And uh, I did 12, 12 features with, with Eddie Murphy. He was uh, extremely gracious. Um, Devil in a Blue Dress, uh, one Denzel Washington, and uh, the famous mouse, better known as Don Cheadle. Uh, this was for Carl Franklin. And um, as you can see, Mouse is in character. A uh, little movie called Boomerang uh, with uh, Halle Berry and uh, Eddie Murphy. And then the last thing I did was a poster for Tom Hanks on News of the World, uh, which uh, had us playing in um, New Mexico for three months. Uh, running around in the, uh, uh, the, the, the mountains and the desert. And um, I looked up and I was the, the oldest person there, which is uh, <laughs> rather uh, 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 something that you don't think about, but everybody else was 35. But um, I ended up um, doing okay. Um, we had a good time. And uh, Tom as action hero uh, and... Uh, that's me on set, you know, and that was before uh, uh, we knew that there was going to be a need for those white masks. Um, we were trying to make sure that we didn't have uh, 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 all this uh, dust and, and stuff uh, blowing on us. Um, and there you can see I'm the guy in the, so I had to dance between the two, two uh, Steadicam operators. They're, they're not on a, um, they're not on a, uh, uh, on a dolly. So the last thing you want to do is bump into anybody. They will invite you to leave. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, uh, this, this is uh, something that's, there, there will be questions afterwards uh, because uh, uh, this was all shot, this stuff was all shot on film. And uh, this was in uh, uh, North Carolina. And uh, there's the young photographer in 1984. Uh, so how many people know what this is? Sharon? Oh, yeah. You're a salmon bag. What'd you shoot when? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, this is a, uh, a caption uh, envelope, and you had to fill everything out, throw it in there, and, uh, and hope that it got to... Uh, to where you needed it to go before closing day. Um, yeah, I was, I was sort of looking through all this stuff and, uh, and, and came upon this and I thought I would throw it in. These are a couple of things, some of my favorites from, from the Jackson campaign to, to be in a church. Uh, we were in a lot of churches, a lot of auditoriums, but then you turn around and you see something like this. Time Magazine didn't run it, but um, I'm glad I shot it. Um, a lot of people talk about Barack Obama and his death threats. Let me tell you, uh, Jesse Jackson had a number of death threats. And uh, this is a photograph. I was, I was with him in Chicago and it was before he had, it, it was, it, no, it was after he had announced. And <clears throat> we weren't, you, you know, I wasn't on the road yet. And, and I flew back there though. And he was, um, he was saying goodbye to his sons. And, and I looked over and I saw that bulletproof vest, you know, point blank. And uh, it does make you pause. 
Now, this is on the road, and, and you'll notice Secret Service agents, but now the, the, the lead agent, uh, you'll notice he's, he's got a, uh, 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 what looks like a, an attache uh, uh, folder. <laughs> that's a, that's a, a bulletproof shield. And uh, he's holding it uh, 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 over the candidate, uh, uh, over his chest area. And again, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, uh, there was, uh, it was, it was a little crazy out there. One of the other things was that I was, I was intrigued by the little boys. The little boys would find him. They would sneak in. They would get underneath the, 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 the secret service. They would, they, they just wanted to see him and, and um, touch him or just look at this young brother reaching. All right. Look at this, look at this kid. Underneath the, the the photograph, um, you know, it's it's like he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna get to him, and and this is my favorite. I saw this little kid, and and I took a flash, and I I I had a I was doing what we call fill flash, and and um, uh, I I had uh, I had I had taken it, and 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 I took it off the camera, and I had a had an extension. Because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't light the the, the little boy quickly enough, so oh, I, wow. I took a guesstimate and got it. Now, on this particular photograph, though, you may recognize in the back uh, a gentleman named George Curry. <laughs> and, and, um, George was George was there asking the hard questions, and I miss him every day. And speaking of <laughs> speaking of journalists. Now, I need some help, folks. I, I know who Sylvester Monroe is on the left. The gentleman next to him, I do not know who that is. The other three co-conspirators are George Curry, Jack White, and Kenneth Walker. And um, mm. somebody recently saw this photograph and said, yeah, uh, if, 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 if uh, you had that many Black men uh, near near Barack Obama when he was uh, 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 running for, for president, they'd have been arrested. Uh, <laughs> we, you know, and it was interesting uh, because the, uh, you, you know, I mean, a lot of time has, has gone by and, and people don't understand this was, this was the first time you had, I mean, they had the boys on the bus, but the boys on the bus didn't have us. And, and, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, and it was like, you could not cover a presidential campaign unless you had covered a presidential campaign, but you couldn't get out there unless, you know, somebody said, you know, said you were okay. And, and uh, all of a sudden the, uh, uh, you know, the, the newspapers and the, uh, the uh, TV people said, well, wait a minute, what are we gonna do now? And they they scrambled, and there were more black folk out there. I mean, you know, it it you know, I, I mean, I know Marquita's out there, and and she knows what the deal was. But I mean, I think back, you know, to uh, to some of the others, you know, uh, 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 and and uh, it was it was crazy time, and and it was and it was wonderful. And uh, I know in my case, when I went in to see Arnold Drapkin. Uh, uh, he he asked me what I wanted to do, and I said, "Well, I'm I'm trying to sort of be be uh, 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 low key." And I said, "Well, I'd like to cover the uh, 1984 Democratic uh, 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 primaries." And he started laughing. He says, "Too late, you know." He says, "I've got guys outside my door fighting, fighting, having fist fights over who's going to cover Alan Cranston." And I said, "I don't want to cover Alan Cranston. I'd like to cover Jesse Jackson." Nobody wanted to cover Jesse Jackson because drum roll, they knew that he was going to leave or should have left after Super Tuesday, and they would have been out of a job. As it turned out, it was a crusade, and we went all the way to the convention. Um, lastly, on, on this, uh, this was, uh, Reverend Jackson, Jackson would do sleepovers in, in, in cities, you know, and he'd be with different families and stuff, and 
And really nobody's ever done that since when, when you think about it. And, and uh, but at this particular time, this was in Brooklyn and I'll never forget it's the Reverend Walter Willie and his family. And uh, you know, uh, myself and Gerald Boyd had asked Reverend Jackson to, uh, 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 if, we could, if we could stick around. And, and stay after, the, after the, the, the press left and went to hotels. And he said, okay. And uh, so, you know, we're having dinner and in the corner there is Ernie Green from the Little, Little Rock Nine uh, on the, on the, all the way on the right. And uh, so, you know, uh, 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 his, uh, that, that, that's his daughter in the background, uh, Reverend Willie's daughter. And so she, you know, you know, said, well, you know, of course, you know, have some dinner, have some fried chicken, have some, would you like, would you, would you like some cornbread? Would you? And then she says to uh, Reverend Jackson, she says, where's the man from Jet? And uh, uh, he, you know, he says, this is Bruce Toleman from Time Magazine. This is Gerald Boyd from, from, from uh, the New York Times. And she says, that's very nice. Where's the Jet man? Yeah, and, that was right. <laughs> and, and uh, she went in, in to, to get some more lemonade. And Reverend Jackson said, see, now y'all know <laughs> who's really important. So, <laughs> with that, uh, I, will, I will leave it and say, now, small donors, I don't think get any smaller than this. This is the way they collected money uh, 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 at every event. And when I saw this being passed, this is not staged. I caught this on the fly. But that's a $10 bill that somebody is putting into a Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, uh, bucket. And I can't leave that without saying this was my chief competitor, nemesis, co-conspirator, friend for life, Jock Cheney from Newsweek. And he's no longer with us, but um, we, we tore it up. So let's get to the music. Um, a young photographer in the corner there with Isaac Hayes. I was not supposed to be there. Uh, I did not have a photo pass. I should have been thrown out on my ear. Lucky for me, there was a security guy that was more interested in the young lady he was talking to as I strolled by and up the stairs uh, at Wattstacks. And I found myself face to face with Isaac Hayes. Um, James Brown. Uh, my first corporate money, my first big job was 10 photographs for $10, uh, 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 or no, for $10 a piece to James Brown's manager, um, Aretha Franklin. I uh, we really had a portrait session with her at her home. She cooked for us. I had a private concert. And I'll always love this photograph because of her eyes. And I got to say that Howard Bingham took me to Regina Jones and Regina Jones gave me these assignments. Okay. And, and I say that because you've got to have opportunity. I say this to young photographers and mid-career photographers. You've got to have opportunity. And if you have opportunity, you've still got to do the work. And uh, okay, what's this? This is this is Al Green's signature. Red roses for the ladies. This was on Soul Train. Uh, sometimes if you see it, you missed it. Uh, and and I just love the way the hands came up. Reverend Green. And when you think about the King of Pop. Back in 1974, he was just figuring out how to uh, beat the Ohio players because the, the Jackson Five were, were, were uh, 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 following uh, the Ohio players and the Ohio players that night were burning it up. And ah. there was a competition, Richard, you know, there was a competition and that was the good stuff. And one of the other things I would come come back to 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 the the to the office with with pictures like this because the crowds, the the little girls, 
you know, and I tell people, you know, before Michael Jackson conquered the world, he belonged to little black girls. And, and uh, 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 folks need to know that. And, and the other thing was folks dressed when they went to these concerts. Uh, I call this shell shock. You'll notice that uh, Jermaine's perm has fallen. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we jumped in the limo and, and um, uh, they didn't even change clothes. <laughs> straight, you know, straight out of there. This is uh, this is a negative uh, for those who shoot digital. This is <laughs> a negative, right? And um, uh, it's one of my favorite negatives. It's uh, Marvin Gaye. Uh, I spent nine days with him, and this was uh, on his ranch, and and uh, he was a rock star. Let us let us be clear. And and uh, he he did live that rock that rock star life, and it it was uh, he was he was extremely generous. Um, we uh, uh, there he is driving his uh, his his rolls uh, on his way to his mother's house because he knew he said, well, you know, we gotta have we gotta have lunch, and the best place for lunch I know a place, <laughs> and so I'll just tell you. There's nothing better than day after um, Thanksgiving leftover dinner. Um, uh, Mrs. Gay was so happy uh, uh, to, to, to see us because her boys were home. And uh, that's Frankie on the left and, and Marvin. And, and she set a place for me. She said, darling, you can take your pictures, but, but you have to sit down and break some bread with us. And she had the same overcooked uh, uh, green beans like my mother and the Wonder Bread, and it was fabulous. I see you laughing, uh, uh, Sharon. <laughs> I see you laughing. Uh, but, but I got to go back. But it's also sad because this was the house that his father killed him in, in 1984. Uh, we found out about it uh, when, uh, when we were on the road with Jesse. Um, a young lady uh, uh, who goes by the name Shaka Khan uh, in a recording studio or in a in a in a rehearsal hall, and um, this was one of those things. Like I I tell I tell photographers, you know, pay attention. It's all around you. Okay, it's all around you. You just got to pay attention. Um, this was what's that? Ah. Um, and and uh, this was a portrait. Sometimes you gotta use, sometimes you got to use props. Uh, these are the these are the, uh, the 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 road cases. And so I, you know, put them put them up on the uh, 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 in, in you know stacked them up and and then uh, ask her to pose in front there. Sometimes you have to you know you just can't take somebody and. And, 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 and put them in front of your camera and shoot them. You got to stage them. And then you got to be ready to catch the action when it hits. This is Shaka Khan in front of uh, a thousand of her nearest and dearest uh, at the Los Angeles Coliseum. And um, uh, we had fun that day. That was the P-Funk Earth Tour. They landed in, 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 in uh, Los Angeles and George Clinton had created a rock opera. Um, Patti LaBelle, we found an old car. I made sure that I was spelling her name right because you could only write it in that dust one time. And uh, we had a good time. Um, on the road with uh, uh, Patti and Sarah and uh, Nona and uh, Sarah Dash left us. And I would like to think that, you know, there is a place in heaven for wild women who wear <laughs> knee-high boots. Um, <laughs> and sometimes uh, those shoes get a little, 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 uh, little tight. <laughs> and and uh, Patty said, my feet were killing me. <laughs> uh, Sly Stone, a triple exposure. And again, this wasn't Photoshop. This was done all in the camera, folks. Um, this was my first book on Bob Marley. Uh, it's called Spirit Dancer. 
Uh, this book wouldn't have happened without the help of Eli Reed, the first black member of Magnum. Uh, Eli called me and he says, he says, you need to do your book. And I said, Eli, I've got 18 rejection letters. Nobody gives a shit. I mean, nobody cares about Bob Marley. And um, he said, call my editor, uh, uh, Jim Mars over at WW Norton. And I did. And Jim Mars said to me, don't send me anything that you have to, uh, that I have to look at with white gloves. So I sent him 25, 11 by 14 silver gelatin prints. We had a deal in a day. Uh, the young photographer uh, uh, waiting for the action to happen backstage with uh, Bob Marley and um, a portrait of Bob. And Bob Marley liked to play soccer backstage and he was good. His ball control was excellent. Whoops, most of the time. So uh, yes, I ducked, but um, y you know, it was, uh, I, I, went, I went to West Africa with him and I, I photographed in 1978, 79 and then 80, and the last time I saw him was in Charles de Gaulle Airport in 1980, January, and we shook hands and he was gone. This was Seoul newspaper. This is Donna Summer. Uh, Leonard Pitts, I think, wrote the... Uh, Leonard, did you write, write this cover story? Well, wait a minute, I think we can, nope, okay. Uh, anyway, um, but uh, like I said, Leonard was- Hello, uh, I'm sorry, I had to figure out how to unmute myself. No, I did not write that cover story. I wrote the, um, the temptation story and, 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 and pissed off the temptations. That was me. Ooh. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. I didn't write down whole though. Nother story. <laughs> That's a whole number, another story. Um, yeah, cause it was either you or, or Steve. And so I, I, I think it was Steve then, but um, we, you know, the thing, the thing is, though that uh, Leonard and I, you know, had, and he'll tell you, you know, we had the opportunity uh, uh, afforded us by, by this wonderful lady, Regina Jones. And um, the, the thing is, she stood up for us. And by that, I mean, now, so Donna Summers was about as big as you could get back in 1977. And the record company, had a policy of, of uh, 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 you, you know, they, they would send out to the lesser magazines, <laughs> they would send out uh, promo shots that some photographer had done in Hollywood, you know, and, and, and generally, and, and, and they did that with a lot of the black publications. And, and so, and a lot of the black publications took them. Regina Jones told them, if you wanna reach my audience, and I think this is, this, this is important today. She said, if you want to reach my audience, you have to allow my photographers and my uh, writers access or else no cover. They said, okay, you've got 20 minutes. Well, we set up on the appointed day. Uh, it was at an art gallery and uh, the shoot was for two o'clock. Uh, we got there at like 11 o'clock in the morning. We set the lights up. Everything was testing, right? And in walks Donna Summers at, at, uh, at noon. And she looks at the lights and she says, oh, you brothers are serious. And, 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 and my partner at the time, Bobby Holland, shot back. Yes, we are, sister. <laughs> she stayed for four hours. Wow. And then when Ebony Magazine called her and asked her, did she have a photographer that she would, would like to shoot with? She said, yes, Bruce Tolliver. That was my first national cover. So, you know, because of Regina, because of Donna Summer, you know, that sort of helped my career. And this was one of the photographs from that session, which I've always loved. I wanted to do it this way and purposely cut off the, the the heads because I, I wanted to it, I wanted to be something like there are people behind the scenes that you never know. 
Uh, Bootsy Collins. Uh, this was another shoot in 1977. Uh, Bootsy brought his brought his wardrobe, and uh, he did four changes of of of, uh, of of wardrobe, and we had a wonderful time over at Warner Brothers. And um, I I wanted to get this shot of I mean you know one of the baddest bass players in the world, and and uh, you know come on he played with James Brown, and and uh, I you know he he had brought his you know two of his his bases and 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 as he started to to strum i i saw this shot and i i had a macro lens in my in my case uh this is a proof sheet for those of you who don't know and and uh, this is what this is what you get when you come back the next day when you can finally see your work uh, you can't talk about funk without the mothership and right. <laughs> we talk about the mothership without Parliament Funkadelic. We we uh, th this was a this was a photo session in a large broom closet before they before they um, they ran out on stage. And you, I will just say to to aspiring photographers and and uh, and uh, 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 others, you have never lived until you've tried to wrestle thirteen people onto a 10 foot backdrop, backdrop when they're high. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is George Clinton. And, you know, it was, this photograph is delicious. It's just wonderful. And, and uh, it's, it's now, you know, uh, uh, been seen all over the world, but nobody beats Rick James for mm -hmm. cutting across a stage and uh, in in his in his badass white boots, um, again uh, the the the, the P Funk Earth tour. He was on that tour. Come on, the tickets were like eight dollars, and you had the Isley Brothers, you had Rick James, you had Parliament, you had Bootsy, and uh, the Brothers Johnson it was crazed back in those days. That's part of the crowd, and. Um, you know, folks were just loving it. And that's part of the crowd. Um, sometimes folks get a little enthusiastic. <laughs> Steve Lynn Morris. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a shot after I got the real shot. Nobody loved this shot because it was out of focus. It was blurred. Well, now it's on the cover of my book. Um, this is a young Denise Williams and Suse Green holding on with dear for dear life with Stevie Wonder, so he doesn't dance off the stage. And uh, they were in Wonder Love. So many people don't know who was in Wonder Love when you when you've got you know Denise Williams uh, and 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 Suse Green and whew, I mean it was it was seriously wonderful. Um, the uh, uh, this was uh, this was a little party for uh, for Stevie's uh, uh, for Stevie's birthday, and uh, you know they would set up and Stevie would play. I think we got out of there at four o'clock in the morning. Mm. I put this picture in because it's very important to me. This is Barry Gordy on the left, Stevie Wonder on the right. Stevie had just handed Barry uh, the tapes for Songs in the Key of Life, mm. and the two of them. We're just talking. The room was filled. It was in Barry's office, and but at that at that moment they were alone, and I and I saw that, and I I uh, I, I jumped on it because I, I I thought it was very important. Gil Scott Heron, Brian Jackson, and the Midnight Band, mm. uh, one of our greatest poets. Uh, you know, understood the understood the power of his his oh, wow. position, and and uh, I have another picture, uh, but I didn't include it. Uh, but uh, Muhammad Ali and 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 Gil, and they were talking about how they could get together with some other folks and maybe uh, 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 
help get uh, Nelson Mandela released a little earlier uh, than he was, but they were trying to do something, you know, and they were speaking up. And I think that's important for folks to know. Um, it's never about being, um, uh, 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 what is it, Idol, uh, uh, American Idol. It's, it's about leaky roofs and, and, and wooden floors and $200 a month uh, places. This is uh, uh, this was the the, the house that uh, uh, LTD rented, and I just love this because these brothers this is they they rolled out of bed and they practiced, and and it was fabulous, and you can't talk about music unless you talk about the guy who brought dance into American homes, and that would be Don Cornelius with Soul Train, and. Uh, you, you know, everybody came and it was wonderful. And then there's Earth, Wind and Fire. I'm, I close with Earth, Wind and Fire. Uh, you know, I, 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 I did a portrait session, as a matter of fact, this portrait session got me, got me a, uh, uh, a call from uh, the manager and he says, you know, Reese liked the way you handled yourself. That was you in that same family shot y'all always take your no. posts. <laughs> All I saw was, <laughs> I was like, yeah. there's Ivan again. It's funny, he did a, oops. Um, the, the, uh, 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 the, there's, there's, there's never been a better front line than Al McKay, Maurice White and Verdine White. That was in Paris. And uh, then this is something a little quieter. We went to Montserrat in the West Indies and uh, there was a recording studio there. And I just love the communication between Al and, and Reese as they're working out a line. And this is, I hope you can see the whole thing, but I almost threw this picture away because it cut off uh, 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 Verdine's eyes. And uh, then I, I took the slide when we were doing the book, I took the slide and, and, and out of the slide holder and there it was. And I had taken a, the stage was, was 12 feet high. On a good day, I'm, I'm five foot seven. And uh, uh, so I took a monopod and, and like a periscope went up and, and, and this was before autofocus and uh, auto exposure. And I guesstimated the distance and then fired it remotely. So I've been trying to figure stuff out for a long time. And, and uh, actually, this is the kind of stuff that got me on that rig for Steven Spielberg. And um, I got to tell you, Mick Jagger doesn't have nothing on, on Maurice White. Maurice White was a rock star. And uh, he, was, he was a friend. Um, this picture was his favorite. It was the end of the, end of the session. And we were, you, 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 as you know, the pyramids are not close like that. So you have to, um, and this was before Photoshop. And so you have to drive around the pyramids, get them in line, and then use a long lens to compress everything. And we did the session, it's a hundred degrees out. And Reese wants to get back to the to the uh, to the bar and uh, in the hotel, and he grabs my strobe light or my strobe umbrella and he starts to walk back. I did something you don't do to Maurice White. I yelled at him and said, "Don't say a word. Walk toward the pyramids." And it became his favorite. And when he died. Um, this went all over the world. And uh, there's the young photographer in, in the mirror. And uh, with uh, Larry Dunn and Reese, we were in Holland. And uh, this picture, Reese wanted everybody to look like superheroes. And it ended up in the uh, National Portrait Gallery uh, in 2019 along with six other pictures for the Portrait of a Nation Prize. Um, and um, uh, my good friend, uh, Sharon Farmer, uh, was, was gracious enough to uh, uh, um, come with me uh, for, the, uh, for the ceremony. And, and it's something I'll never forget. 
And that's it, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> I see Jack White has just joined, who was in our earlier photograph. And, and you, as you'll see from the um, chat room, everybody, uh, there's plenty of wows and marvelous and amazings. Uh, so uh, you done good. <laughs> well, well, now, I, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Bruce, Bruce, you did it, man. Hey, who's? This is who's, Roy, man. Roy, you're 84. Hey, boy. Roy Lewis, how are you? You read, man, 84, you know, with Jesse down at the Harambe Hotel. That's where he stayed in D.C. That's, that's, uh, that is, that is. That's that I is. met you at the Harambe Hotel, the Howard Harambe Hotel in 84. The Howard, the Howard Inn. How, no, it was Harambe. Well, oh. it might have been the Harambe, but. I knew it as the Howard. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, Bruce. Okay. Yeah, they did change the name. Yeah, <laughs> they, they changed, they changed it to they changed the Howard. Ah, in. ah. It was Harambe first, and then Howard in. Howard bought Harambe. Ah, right. okay. Yeah. All right, all right. A little bit of that, Bruce. But hey, man, this is a great, great presentation. Great presentation. And you're teaching, man, a lot of guys, and you know, the film thing, putting the film thing in there. And this really, I'm glad it's on YouTube and all of that, Facebook. And because, you know, the digital thing, yeah, they've taken over and all that, but they need to know a little bit more about that film era that we went through. I think, I, I, I think that, I mean, you know, as, as you know, one of the things uh, uh, that I showed in the, um, in the, um, 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 earlier portion where I showed the movie work that I'm doing. Right. I gotta say, I gotta say the, the, uh, you know, all that was done or most of that was done with digital. Some of the last stuff. And, I know. and it's, it's, you know, it, it, it has its place. Right. But I think that uh, uh, it's important to have a working knowledge. I would say Richard, a working knowledge of film and what you can do with lenses and and because and study study some other photographers there's good photographers out there who were doing a lot of stuff oh, and, yeah. and and i think that's important because it sort of gives direction and then you can take off from there and do and do other stuff and 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 i think you know the thing that i'm i'm saddened about is that um uh, in the movie industry you know, there's, you know, um, there's, you know, they, nope. they talk about diversity, but, you know, when I started on, I mean, my first thing for, for ABC television was Laverne and Shirley and, and then, you know, taxi and, and, and stuff like that. I mean, the guy, the guy looked at my portfolio and I, I had my little meager portfolio and I had, uh, I had uh, um, Diana Ross, uh, Patty LaBelle, Shaka Khan, Aretha, because I hadn't shot any white performers. And, right, and, right. And and um, the guy, the guy took a chance. He says, "Well, if you can shoot these divas, then surely you can shoot Joan Collins." So he puts right. me on Dynasty. And, right. and right. when I think about that, you know, the opportunity that I had—that's the important thing. I mean, you still have to do the work, and I keep saying that. But what I am that I am disappointed with is that with all this talk about you know diversity and 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 whatever, there's so many African American filmmakers and so many people who don't know that black still photographers exist. That don't you know that say well we didn't know there were any black still photographers. They right, say right. every day, and it pisses me off quite frankly. You know and and. Um, it's hard to, you know, it's, it's hard to change that. And, and uh, you know, I mean, I, I used to tell folks, um, you, you know, when I'd walk on the set, you know, the only things that were black were me and my camera. That's right. I'm yeah. glad you paid a tribute to Eli Reed, and I'm gonna shut up, Eli Reed and Howard Bingham, man, and how important it is when you're in the room to think about somebody else 
that might not be in the room, that could be in the room, could perform in the room. And, and I'm just glad that you paid tribute to those two of the greatest photographers I've ever, that ever lived, Eli Reed and Howard Bingham. Howard Bingham staying with Muhammad Ali all that time. We went Zaire together for, for the fight, for the fight. And I, Howard and I, we, we bumped, you know, we were doing the same kind of stuff. Cause you know, I, I covered Ali. We started around the same time covering uh, Ali in mm -hmm. about 465. And so even before Ali became Muslim, it became champion. Yep. But, but I'm so glad that you paid, and I'm glad this format, Richard, this format that you got going here and paying tribute to people, it's really important because this is going out to the world and, and they need to know that, you know, that we out here and you're paying tribute to them. I'm gonna have to go, man. I'm really at a picnic, my the Washington Informer picnic. Well, so I really got to go, right. man. They're looking at the picnic. And, and, and so, but I'm going to have to jump off because, you know, the, I got the bosses over there. Anyway, I want to enjoy myself a little, but I want to make sure, congratulate you, man. I want to get to that. I want to see that show where it is out there because I've never really been to that, the Rock rock Museum, and I'm going to check it out. I'll definitely pay. There's, definitely. A, lot of, there's a lot of wonderful stuff there. And and again, that, that again, I got to say it, that young sister is doing, doing serious work, Richard. She's doing serious work. And um, I want to have on Richard. <laughs> okay. Thanks for, thanks for, thanks for being with us, Roy. That was great. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Hey, Bruce, I'm sure, I'm sure you know, Andrew Cowens. Yes. Yeah. Cause he was one of the photographers that did a lot of those movie sets as well. Andrew Cowens was, um, I think he was the first, I believe. He was the, uh, okay. Technically he was the second. Uh, only because I, and I only know that because I'm doing some research on a project uh, uh, that'll, uh, that'll involve uh, African-American photographers. But when you look at his body of work, you know, uh, uh, and, and the first guy was a fellow named uh, uh, Bill or William Gillum, who they, they both got into the, the guild. One got into the guild like in in, in January, the other one got, got there in November. So, you know, of 1969. Okay. But, um, you know, when you look at Adger Cowan's work, you look at um, uh, 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 Golden Palm, you look at across 110th Street, you look at Dirty Dancing, you look at, uh, I mean, you start, <laughs> you, you know, you start looking at stuff and it's like, damn, he did that, you know, and and uh, I also point out, you, you know, for, for for skeptics or whatever you want to, you know, there ain't nothing black the last time I checked about Henry Fonda and uh, 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 Jane Fonda and uh, uh, Hepburn, okay? And so he was handling that, you know, and and so it's not like, oh, well, you know, we, 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 we only, you know, would, would have somebody black to shoot something, you know, to shoot a black film. You know, he was doing, he was right. doing it all and he was doing it with grace. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we had the, we had the honor to honor him at one of our awards dinner. Okay. And that's when we found out about all the different movies that he had done. Because a lot of times, you know, you don't know that that's a black person uh, yes. that's doing that work. I remember when I was younger, and I would look in the Washington um, Post magazine. They come in the Washington Post magazine on Sundays. Yes. And I would always see these black and white images, and come to find out it was a black photographer that done that did those images. And I had the opportunity to meet him, and we also had an opportunity to honor him as well. So. You no, got to no. call his name, Benita. Um, I'm trying to remember this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll remember it in a few minutes. I'm having okay. a delay. All right. All right. Just a momentary delay. Yeah, yes. momentary right. delay. But I'll get the name. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, there's been people out there who have been doing the work. You know, there have been oh, people yeah. who have been doing that. I mean, as, as, as Roy mentioned, you know, I mean, you know, a guy like Howard Bingham. I mean, you know, a lot of times people get caught up with, you know, Gordon. And and Roy De Carava, and and uh, there there are there are more, and 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 there's folks, you know, who, who have been doing this work, and it's, I mean, it's crazy trying to be a photographer. Period. 
True. Yeah. Very true. Especially nowadays. <laughs> His okay. name is Robert McNeil. Mr. McNeil. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. He, he's deceased now, but uh, we had opportunity to honor him as well. We had an opportunity to honor um, Howard Bingham before he passed on. And, and I would love to have the opportunity to honor you as well. Thank you. Very good. I, I think we need to, to stop sharing the screen so we can see everybody. Yeah, let you me know how to do that. Um, wait, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Now it's time to for everybody to, well, if there aren't any more questions right now, it's time for everybody to uh, introduce himself or herself. Uh, <laughs> please be brief. But uh, interesting. <laughs> so, so uh, I'm going to start with. I'm going around my, what's in my on my uh, screen here. Uh, Carl Rudd. Uh, hello, everyone. Great presentation, Bruce. Uh, I'm Carl Rudd. I'm a photographer with the Exposure Group here in Washington. Uh, I'm retired now. Was a, a manager for years on different projects. Uh, involving litigation support. Uh, but it was a wonderful presentation. Thank you for your body of work. All right, Greg Morris. Unmute, please. Unmute. Unmute. Sorry about that, folks. Um, Greg Morris. <laughs> I'm a, a assistant professor of journalism at Hunter College, New York City, uh, City University of New York. Um, I've written a few books. Uh, I have this uh, photo journalism uh, angst. Uh, I wasn't brave enough. I, I, when I was in working with newspapers at Gannett and stuff, I saw how um, photographers weren't as well respected. I mean, it was really, really difficult for them. So I was wise enough or chicken enough uh, to keep my focus on writing and reporting and doing whatever photography I, I could do on the side. And I just want to say that uh, this presentation today and seeing everyone and hearing everything uh, just really blow my mind. So it's really a pleasure. And I owe you, Richard Prince, very much for inviting me. <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, Yvonne, Yvonne Roman, he's got to run. I wonder if he has time to say something before he leaves. Yvonne, are you there? Well, I guess he left. All right, we'll, we'll go to um, uh, Benita Bing. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nita Bing. I'm the president of the Exposure Group, African American Photographers Association here in Washington, D.C., and also the owner of uh, Talbot and Bing Studios in Washington, D.C., and the producer of the Zoom meetings. Exactly. All right. Uh, George Tolbert, speaking of the uh, Exposure Group and Tolbert and Bing Studios. Uh, I work. I, I work for Benita Bing. Um, I'm a retired. <laughs> sim, I'm a semi-retired photographer and uh, retired from the U.S. Senate Photo Studio. The first African American to to be a, a, a U.S. Senate photographer. Uh, actually, I'm so far I'm the only one. Oh, <laughs> damn. Okay. Well, that's worth noting, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, Maurice Fitzgerald. Maurice. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, uh, I'm Maurice Fitzgerald. I'm also associated with the Exposure Group, um, located in Prince George's County, Maryland. I work with the uh, Washington Informer newspaper for over 20 years, the uh, Prince George's Post for, uh, newspaper for about six years, and I cover a lot of uh, political events in Prince George's County and in the District of Columbia. All right. Welcome. Thank you, Maurice. Thank John you. Watson. Hi, I'm a journalism professor at American University. And I want to say to Bruce, I've got to buy your book so I can show my kids that there was big stars before Nicki Minaj. Your stories were fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, Jack White. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, I'm Jack White, a retired uh, Time Magazine correspondent and 
I had the honor and privilege of covering the Jesse Jackson campaign in 1984 with Bruce Solomon. I think it might have been Bruce's first uh, foray into photojournalism. Yes, and it was. Uh, it was we had a we had we had, we had a spectacular time. I won't bore anybody here with uh, telling the story about uh, what happened to Bruce on the night before uh, we went to. Um, the Black Muslim, uh, uh, I forget what they call it. Uh, uh, what was it called? Savior's All Saints Day. Day. Savior's Day, right? In Chicago, went with uh, at Jesse Jackson's house when we were on the way over there. But uh, Bruce will remember that. Bruce Absolutely. will remember that for the rest of his life. <laughs> All right. All right, Richard. 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 So I didn't. I I did not eat pork. Uh -huh. And and Jack's there, Curry's there, Sylvester Monroe is there. We're having dinner. At, 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 well, let's let's get the context, Bruce. Let's if we're going to tell the story. Let's tell the whole story. And this the, was this was in this was in 1984. It was uh, in the aftermath of all that fuss about Jesse Jackson and his use of the term Jaime and Jaime Town to refer to Jews and New York City. <laughs> and um, Jesse at that time was denying that he had uh, that he had ever used that language, and this was also before he had started locking out uh, uh, black reporters in particular. Mm. So we were in Chicago, and he was scheduled to go to the Savior's Day speech at which Louis Farrakhan was going to speak. And for some reason or other, we all ended up at his house to have dinner. Now the cook wasn't there which meant that because it was a Sunday, which meant that uh, Jackie's, Jesse, Jesse's wife, Jackie, was going to cook us for dinner. And Jackie has many. Oh, you, you, we lost you. Oh, we no. lost the sound. Jack, Jack. you're doing the punchline. <laughs> Jack, Jack. I can't hear you. What can we do? Bruce is going to have to tell the rest of the story. I Jack. guess so. Jack. Can't okay. hear you, Jack. I want to send him a message here. Jack. <laughs> it looks like his mic is not muted, so I don't know what happened. So what happened, Jack? All right. I'll tell the story. <laughs> so, uh, come on, Jack. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you, yeah. Okay, so the bottom line was that uh, Jackie cooked um, uh, uh, pork. She, she, she cooked, uh, 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 and, 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 and I hadn't eaten pork in, in, I don't know, uh, eight, or, eight or nine years. And, uh, but we had been on the road and we hadn't had a good meal. And shall we say that I took a deep breath, you know, they passed the plate once, they passed the plate twice. And on that third pass, you know, they looked at me aghast because I took two pork chops and I remembered how to clean those bones my, as my mother had taught me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so we do remember that. And, and Jack, I'm sure, would have told it much better. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, and, and the other part of it was that Jack had, had accused, or, and Jack and Curry had accused Reverend Jackson, saying that, you know, Farrakhan's going to have a pork <laughs> uh, 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 somewhere, and, 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 and he's going to find out that you've just eaten pork. And it did not appear to, to bother the, the Reverend. That is <laughs> well, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> okay. All right, next, Harold Jackson. Harold. <laughs> oh. Harold. Harold. I think he's having some uh, problems with his uh, audio. Unmute, Harold. No, I don't even see his audio. Oh, okay. Oh, All right, we'll move. Moving on. All right, moving, moving right along. Uh, uh, Dr. Marquita Smith, do you have anything to add? No, just hello. 
It's still me. <laughs> okay. All right, Yvette, how about you? Do you have anything to, have anything to add? Nope, I'm good. It was a wonderful presentation, Bruce. I've always, I, I will add one thing that as a, as a reporter from the get-go, I realized early on that um, photojournalists were the best partners we could have out in the field. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful to have been trained by newsrooms to, um, to work with photographers as partners um, because our stories were that much stronger um, mm -hmm. because we worked with them in that, in that manner. So, so thank you for the Wonderful uh, trip down memory lane. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Yvette. Uh, Sharon Farmer. Oh. <laughs> Sharon. We can't hear you. Oh, okay. What's that say? Wait a minute, hold it up again. This says hip hop. Oh, uh, two okay. weeks ago, the Smithsonian's Nat National uh, American African American History. African -American turned my uh, photo of the kids with the boom boxes into a t-shirt that's oh, wow. on sale down there. We've made a two year, uh, what I call good deal, all right? <laughs> not, only do you have, not only does she have t-shirts, but they have posters as well. That's I right. didn't know that, cool. <laughs> Very good, congratulations. <laughs> okay, uh, Leonard Pitts, your name came up. Well, hello there. Um, hello there. I am Leonard Pitts. I'm a columnist for the Miami Herald, but way before that, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> I was a, a stringer for and later the editor of Soul Magazine, where Bruce also got some of his earliest work. Uh, and in that capacity, I had the uh, honor of being in the room when a few of those, of those photographs were made. Bruce, uh, man, yeah, man. great presentation. And uh, just, I, I would just say that I'm, I'm so proud. I'm so glad that you made it a point to uh, to single out Regina Jones, who gave both of us uh, our start, and who I don't think is is widely enough known. Without Regina Jones, no me, probably no you, no uh, Bobby Holland, no Mike Terry of the LA Times, and no J. Randy Tarbarelli, the celebrated uh, biographer of, of so many stars. So you know, RJ is sort of you know the the, the person that is responsible for a lot of us being here without ever really being, uh, you know, acknowledged herself. So I just personally, between me and you, I'm just glad you, you, mm -hmm. you single her out for that. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't know all that about all these other writers and, and their connection. Oh yeah. Know. RJ, I think, uh, 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 Walter Burrell was, was, wasn't he Bruce? One of the first black publicists in network television. I remember him, his name. Yeah. He, he okay. came through soul magazine. I mean, we just, yes. soul mm. magazine was a place for a lot of us to learn our craft, mm -hmm. you know, at least it was for me. I don't want to speak for Bruce, but for me, it was a no, place no. to learn my craft right. and to figure out how to do this mm -hmm. thing. And she, she sort of gave us, she, she gave us that, 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 that place. And a lot of us who are working now, owe, owe our careers to that. All right, you're here. Yeah. Uh, Claudette James. Hi, good afternoon. Um, thanks tremendously for today's presentation. Um, a lot of memories. I worked very closely with Jesse Jackson when he would come home to Greenville, South Carolina mm -hmm. um, with his mother and his grandmother. And the stories were amazing. Jesse opened a lot of doors for a lot of people. And mm -hmm. I think that's something we as journalists and communicators need to talk a little bit more about um, because to get some of those front page stories, um, took quite a bit of work. Um, currently, I am founder of Truth in Education and Journalism um, Consulting Services in New York City and Philadelphia. And the idea is to support initiatives, uh, businesses, individuals who are passionate about truth. And that's why I appreciated this presentation so much today, because you have the evidence, you documented the work that was done and it's amazing for our people. And we're celebrating actually, uh, recently celebrated the establishment of another per perpetual endowment um, to provide scholarships for journalism students, freshmen journalism students and education students. Again, this was such a pleasure today. Thank you tremendously for your work. Thank you, Claudette. Press Weeks. Fred Sweets, still waiting for Bruce to come to Miami and sign soul R&B funk. So 
I'm sure you're going to show up sooner or later. You told me to go get the book before it came out. I did what you told me to do. Now come and sign it. Okay. <laughs> that, that's, that's pointed enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Fred. Roger Witherspoon. We can't hear you. Unmute, please. Hey, is that better? Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, I've been around since the 60s and always admired the work of various photographers. And I'm curious, Bruce, do you have 33s or 45s in that jukebox? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. I couldn't. You, it, it was gurgled. Something yeah, about. You, you got your, your, your sound is muddled. Muddled. Uh, something about something about jukeboxes and something about. Yeah, the got, question was. You got 45s or 33s or 45 in that jukebox. 45s or 33s in the jukebox. Oh, those, are, those are 33. Or, or no, no, no. no. Uh, those are uh, 78s. Oh, wow. 78s. Wow. 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 Whoa. <laughs> the real deal. <laughs> this is this is a 1947 um, uh, uh, Wurlitzer 750E jukebox, mm -hmm. and uh, these are all of my grandfather's 78. And uh, wow. he's got Louis Jordan on there, and uh, some James Brown, and uh, even some Patsy Cline. And uh, but uh, I. When 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 I found this uh, jukebox, um, I uh, I've had it I've had it for the past 30, 30, 30 three years. Yeah. Wow. And, and I've got a and I've also got. Well, let me put it like this, Richard. My wife suggested that I start collecting something other than jukeboxes, something that maybe is a little small. These are like small refrigerators. And uh, in my and I also have a. A 1947 Rockola, uh, mm. for, uh, 1426, I think. Anyway, but yeah, so though that's that's my jukebox collection. All right, excellent. All right, all right. Barbara uh, Brandon Croft. Okay, hi everybody. Um, hi. I am very. It's very, I'm very humbled to be invited to this. I'm a, I'm a cartoonist. I'm, I made the first black woman to be nationally syndicated in the mainstream press. That's different than being in the black press. Jackie Orms was the first in the black press, but um, I did make my um, debut there. And I have a book coming out um, with a collection of my work. My syndication was between um, 1991 and 2005. So in February that comes out. And- Congratulations. Uh, Thanks. Um, this is like my this is like a shameless plug, but also um, plug please. <laughs> also in um, Ohio State University, um, the Billy Ireland um, Cartoonist Museum and Library is currently um, featuring um, a an exhibit of mine uh, and my dad's Ivan Brandon's brother. Um, it's called Still Races in America, and um, it's um, I was so glad that Ivan got to come and see it, but it's um, I'm hope hopefully it's going to be a traveling exhibit because um, my dad was one of the pioneer black cartoonists, also in the mainstream press. He did Luther. His name was Brumsick Brandon Jr. and um, and I loved 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 this presentation. It was so great. I can't wait to watch it again. I think I hope. All it's right, fun. all right. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, Beatrice you. McBride. Yeah, unmute, please. Unmute. Unmute. Hi, I'm Beatrice McBride. I'm a freelance photographer based in Fort Worth, and I'm part of the Exposure Group. And um, speaking of Jesse Jackson, I've been photographing the Ahmaud Arbery trial for the last two years in Brunswick, and he's been a huge part of that. It, it's so humbling to watch him in his senior years really pushing and really inspiring the uh, local community. And I have an exhibit coming up here in Fort Worth. It's a print exhibit. It's called Justice for Ahmaud. It could have been me. And uh, I was with the family for, and first of all, Bruce, that was fabulous. Like, let me just jump on myself. But I was with the family for the most part, as well as some legal organizations photographing. So that's my uh, first exhibit. So there'll be more. This is going to be in Fort Worth, Texas, though. All right. Thank you, Beatrice. And, and congratulations. Good luck with that. Uh, L.A. Francis. Yes, thank you, Richard. Uh, Elliot Francis, former news anchor, um, current host and producer of 
uh, Elliot Fra now with Elliot Francis on Facebook and uh, YouTube. And, you know, when I first uh, got into this business back in the 70s, one of the first jobs I had was as a, a staff photographer, uh, photographing the or, or photographing the old uh, Summer Thing concert series back in Boston, my hometown. Mm -hmm. And I ran around for about four years with a Nikon F and a Minolta 101. And unfortunately, they were stolen after some mm -hmm. time. So I now survived these days with the Sony 6100. But um, for from one who can appreciate a good bulk roller and a dark room, thank you so much, Bruce, for all those memories and those great uh, photographs. They were just wonderful. Great presentation. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Elliot. Yes. Uh, Marquita Paul Eckert. We heard from you earlier. Well, I'm just really excited to uh, be able to uh, see uh, the scope and breadth of Bruce's work because I've been a fan for a long time. We met on the Jesse Jackson campaign and to uh, echo what you know Claudette said, that was uh, a, an, a great opportunity for many uh, young journalists just uh, starting out. And uh, it was just um, the beginning of what became and what has become a really important sort of mission to document our history in all the ways that are available to us. And um, I just um, I just would love to be the curator of uh, Bruce's archives because yeah. <laughs> that, that? has got to be an incredible experience, Bruce. I don't even know how you anyway. All right. Keep track of everything. But um, I'm going to uh, actually be passing by uh, Cleveland next week. And so now I'm going to make it a point to go there to see your exhibition. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely uh, indeed. and so I, I'm just really glad to, uh, to uh, connect with you in person again, in person, quote unquote, but, um, and congratulations on, you know, your wonderful work. And I look forward to seeing so much more. All right. Thanks, Marquita. Uh, Diana Fuentes. A new member, uh, by the way, of the NAHJ Hall of Fame. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Very nice, how embarrassing. Yes, but thank you. It was very yeah. exciting. I'm executive director of investigative reporters and editors, but I've been a journalist for more than 35 years and lots of times covering state and national politics. And as a longtime editor, I, this was a wonderful presentation. And I'm sure your editors were very blessed, Bruce, to have you as a photographer. I was looking at especially those behind the scenes photos. I mean, that that is blessed. You've got an incredible eye and, and, and it was just Genius, genius is what I can say. I mean, to take the time to do those things and to get to know your sources, that's just amazing, amazing work. You know, just like Yvette said, um, us reporters always counted on our photographers because it really is lots of times I said from a reporter's viewpoint that a photo really speaks a thousand words. Here, here. Okay, thank you, Diana. Dorothy Bland, are you back, back with us? Uh, unmute, please. On you. Okay. Thanks, Bruce, for a fabulous presentation. Just loved it. Um, and thanks so much for all the memories. And you're right, we have to tell our stories. Speaking of telling our stories, I just want to put in a plug. Um, Marquita um, and I just completed a book chapter called um, Looking at um, Political Messaging in Music and Entertainment Spaces Around the Globe. It's a new book out, just as an FYI, it's in academic circles. But again, this has been fabulous. I can't wait to share uh, with students. And I'm at the University of North Texas and Beatrice. Yes, um, I've just sent a note. Um, students should watch it. We, ha uh, we also have the UNT NABJ chapter. Um, I'm the advisor, so yes, I will certainly be sharing this information with our students. Great program. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. The, uh, the video of this will be on YouTube. Uh, right now it's on Facebook as well, but uh, we have the beginning chit chat, uh, which will be edited out later on because we want to just get the actual round table. But that's something your students um, uh, can view. Uh, Sandy Adams. Um, Bruce, amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. And um, I started off in film and of course in digital now, I'm not that young as I look. I'm a secretary of the exposure group and I'm an independent photojournalist and primarily a nature photographer, as you can see behind me. And mm. thank you so much for invite, letting me join your group. You guys are all amazing. It's, it's wonderful to hear and I love learning more and more. Here, here, well, thanks for being with us. Denise Bridges. 
Smile, Denise. <laughs> Hi, Richard. Thank you so much for including me in this uh, group. This is great. I have loved it. Thank you so much, Bruce. And I'm surprised I didn't run across you in Los Angeles because that's where I started out at the Wave newspapers oh. uh, back in the 70s. And then I went into the summer program for minority journalists and worked at the Associated Press for a couple of years and then went to work for Bob Maynard at the Oakland Tribune and made a march across the sun, uh, across the country for the next 30 something years and ended up at uh, the Virginian Pilot in a job that Marquia actually told me about and mm. uh, went there to be director of recruiting and worked with Marquita. And the thing I loved about Marquita and still love about her is that she is a very direct person. And uh, Marquita would straighten me out <laughs> when, I was, <laughs> when I wasn't getting the job done. She would, she would say, you need to think about this. You need to do this. And, and she kept me straight. So I appreciated that very, very much about her. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just glad to be in this number. I'm happily retired these days, taking care of the elders. I got an 89-year-old mom and an 89-year-old godmom. So I'm taking care of folks. Um, but so it's been great to. All right. Thank you very much, Denise. Uh, Lynn Adrian, board member. <laughs> yeah, I'm a board, my, I'm Lynn Adrian, I'm a board member for journalism. I am in the process of retiring from my position as the director of the DC graduate program in broadcast and digital journalism for the Newhouse School at Syracuse. Uh, Bruce, phenomenal work, a phenomenal body of work. And thank you so much for sharing and presenting it to us. All thank right. You. Thank you, Lynn. Ivan Brandon. Unmute, unmute. Yeah, yeah. I'm learning how to drive this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, those are, those are great photos. Um, and the fact that you survived hanging out with Jesse and that <laughs> crowd of reporters that you were with uh, is amazing. Uh, <laughs> As I said, we had adventures. Yeah, I, I know that crew. Uh, they are a walking adventure. Uh, the great photos, and as soon as I can beat my kids up enough to give me the money for your book, I'm going to get a copy. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, Beverly Price just joined us. Hello. Hey, how are you? Fine, we can't see you, but we can uh, oh, hear yeah, you. Yeah, I come right now. I was uh, cleaning it up, so forgive okay. me. Uh, hold on one second. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. How are you? you? Well, we, you, we oh, saw you again. Now, now we you see got you. Yeah. <laughs> I was got? cleaning my house, but it was so good to just listen and learn. I'm a new photographer. I just graduated from um, MICA with my master's in photography. What's, what's MICA? What's something like uh, Merlin Institution, uh, Institute College of Art. Okay. In Baltimore. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't start out as someone who thought they were going to be into photography or journalism, but it's just where my life path has taken me and I'm enjoying the ride and I'm learning. <laughs> this semester I'm teaching at American University, um, oh. digital intro to digital photography. So it's good for me to pass on this knowledge and introduce uh, young photographers like myself to people like you and we're learning so much more. I'm learning about photographers every day. So this, is, right. really, this is great. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, Francis Huntley Cooper, anything to add to what you've already said? Uh, unmute, please. Yes. I just want to say I really enjoyed Bruce's presentation, and um, I work with some of the young folks who are going into photography, so I'm going to make sure they have your book. I'll buy a book for them. And then I just wanted to also say that I'm a Jesse Jackson uh, fan. We went to school together. He's a little older than I am, but... Um, he also um, took pictures of youth when he came here in Wisconsin in 1988 to campaign. And my daughter was on the front cover with him and another white girl that he lifted up on the shoulder. They were like five years old. He was strong back in the day. So <laughs> I've been a follower and a supporter of uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson for years. All right. Very Thank good. You. Thank you, Francis. Adam Powell. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Great presentation. Uh, some of us. Uh, go back to CBS News in the 1960s and black and white negative film. That's all there was at CBS and NBC then. Um, but uh, then ran in NPR News in the 80s. Uh, 
uh, now running a 50 state campaign. We are training thousands of election workers and campaign workers around the country to protect against uh, cyber attacks. Uh, mm -hmm. And we expand our program to Africa this fall, uh, uh, preparing for elections there next year. Um, and uh, but in between, I was an executive producer for Quincy Jones, and one of my assignments was to spend a year with Reverend Jackson, which was um, an interesting trip. <laughs> All right, I'm sure that was. <laughs> okay, thanks, Adam. Uh, Greg Moore, we can't see you, but but we can we 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 can hear you. Yeah, you'll you'll forgive me for keeping my microphone off. There's there's a lot going on. Um, okay, okay. Starting with personal vanity. Uh, I happen to be. <laughs> I happen to be from Detroit, and if anybody knows anything about my hometown, you're not going to catch us looking raggedy. So I just, you know. <laughs> okay. I work these days as a columnist at the Arizona Republic, part of the USA Today Network. Uh, I write sports. I'm also a member of the editorial board. Uh, so that means I write politics, race, whatever have you. Um, <clears throat> sort of happened because they created a monster. I got into the business around 2003 when you know everybody was basically ducking layoffs and and just trying to stay employed and my goal was always to just be like one step ahead of things so if they needed somebody to work in sports yeah sure I played college football I can work in sports they need somebody to work in news yeah absolutely I had a Dow Jones newspaper fund uh fellowship at the Charlotte Observer uh University of North Carolina I can I can do that too and so from bouncing back and forth, back and forth, it just created all these opportunities for me. And uh, that landed me basically on this Zoom call where I was able to listen to and watch a presentation about one of my passions, which is music. Um, my mother's family, my paternal or my maternal grandfather, uh, he played, you know, played any kind of instrument you wanted for anybody um, who had a band. And music has just been in my blood for as long as I can remember. So I was really grateful uh, to hear some of these stories. And I guess I'll contribute one myself. Since we're all talking about Jesse Jackson, <clears throat> I had been at the Republic maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, who even remembers now. But I was covering baseball that day. So I was wearing shorts. And I got this breathless phone call saying, yo, Jesse Jackson's coming to the office and uh, can you come in to be part of, sit in with the editorial board and some other reporters while they interviewed the guy? And I'm like, I've got on shorts, <laughs> but I ended up going back to the office and uh, begging that if we ended up on video, which we did, that I just not look like a guy wearing shorts to interview Jesse Jackson. And sure enough, my kneecaps are in that video. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what does that tell you? <laughs> okay. Thanks, Greg. Now, uh, yeah. thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> now, also, those who will read journalisms, which I hope everybody is, uh, will note that uh, Greg covered the Native American Journalists Association conference in Phoenix, which uh, is concluding right now. And uh, so be sure to check out his work in journalisms in addition to, you know, the Arizona Republic and all these other outlets. And thanks again, Greg, for that. Uh, Mary Curtis. Yes, thank you for these wonderful and original photos and all the stories. Marvin Gaye, I mean, enough said. Um, Mary C. Curtis, uh, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I'm based. Also, my office is in D.C., where I write columns for Roll Call on the intersection of politics, culture, and race. I host their Equal Time podcast. I guest host Slate's uh, What Next Daily podcast. I just finished doing two weeks there, and I'm a senior leader with the Op-Ed Project. Thanks. All right, thank you, Mary. Uh, Janine Cummins. Hello, hi, um, Janine Cummins. I'm also a member of the Exposure Group. I apologize for not having video, but I'm not on the computer with the um, with a camera right now. Um, I'm with the Exposure Group. I'm a retired educator in Maryland. And I do freelance photography, event photography, things like that. And um, it's just a pleasure being on this video, on this webinar with people that I've read about, heard about. Um, and, and, and Bruce Tom, and your, your, your presentation was excellent. I've been on other webinars with you and I believe you're in Songs of My People because I've always collected photography books. 
And I just, you know, and go, now that I'm into photography more, I'm starting to, you know, people that I've been reading about, I'm starting to meet online and be in this type of situation. So it's, it's a pleasure to be a part of this. Thank you. Well, and, thank and you, Janine. Yes. Excuse me? Well, thank, you. thank you very Go much. Okay. Somebody else saying something? I, I just was just saying to Ellie Francis, I remember you from WARC in Springfield. We were up there at the same time. All right. Darlene Superville. Thank you, Richard, and thank you, uh, Bruce. Great photographs. I'm Darlene Superville. I'm a White House reporter for the Associated Press. I'm the treasurer of the local chapter of NABJ. And this morning, I ran and finished the annual 10-mile race in Annapolis, Maryland. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Darlene. OK, uh, did I leave anybody out? No good. Okay, well, that's that's. Uh, Sorry, Holly. Yeah, Richard Francis Huntley. Yeah, yeah, she spoke earlier. Oh, okay. About, about right. Madison, Wisconsin. Holly, correct my human error problems. They were not technological. They were human. Oh yes, right. Okay. Hello to everyone. Uh, greetings from Texas. A number of you from Texas as well. I retired here a couple of years ago after forty-five years in journalism, working in Birmingham, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and Houston. And some of you I know, some of you I don't know, but it's good to see all of your faces. So thank you, Richard, for inviting me. Thank you, Harold, for being here. Okay. All right, anybody else? Okay, good. Well, I'm glad we got everybody. I think we, we've got enough to wrap up. And before we leave, I will let everybody know, of course, about this book. I guess you can order wherever, however you get your books. And of course, you can go to Cleveland and see Bruce's exhibit in person. And, and of course, let's not forget my my message to Ron DeSantis. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, thanks everybody. We're gonna have uh, for those on the chat that there will be uh, um, uh, uh, comments uh, that, that everybody put in the chat room will be uh, forwarded to all those on the call. And uh, what else? That's about it. We're gonna we're gonna do this again next uh, next month in September, and uh, hope to see most of you then. And enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thanks again for coming, everybody. Right, thanks, Bruce. And thank you, Bruce. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bruce, you. awesome. Thank you, Richard. Yes. Yes. Good job. Thank you, Richard. Great job. Tell, tell all your friends. Enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs>